You're watching College Football Now. I am Harrison Graham, your host on today's show. And on today's show, we're going to get you caught up with the latest news and rumors around college football, including some transfer portal updates here in just a little bit. A couple other stories sprinkled in as well. Starting with Jeff Brom, the Purdue head coach is leaving West Lafayette to head to his alma mater, Louisville, uh, to be the head coach there. That, of course, coming after Scott Satterfield left Louisville to take uh, the Cincinnati job after Luke Fickle left for Wisconsin. You see how the coaching carousel works. It's quite frankly a domino effect. So Jeff Brom leaves Purdue after six seasons. And you look at what he did there, and it certainly took some time. You know, his first two years kind of stuck in the middle there, then a couple of down seasons. But the last two years, 2021 goes 9-4 and four this year, wins the Big Ten West, and was competitive with Michigan in the Big Ten title game for about three quarters. But ultimately, the Wolverines pulled away there. Last two years, 17-9 and nine, uh, is what what Brom went at Purdue, and now he returns home to his uh, alma mater, uh, Louisville, where he, of course, played and uh, gets a chance to lead that Cardinals program. Now, grade the hire, Jeff Brom to Louisville, A, B, C, D, or F. I think it's a solid B plus uh, for Louisville because I think some people would argue currently that Purdue to Louisville is – Maybe an equal level job. I mean, the Big Ten's certainly in a stronger position than the ACC right now. Historically, I would say Louisville's a better job. But uh, I think uh, for the Cardinals, I think it's an upgrade from Scott Satterfield, to be quite frank. Uh, so I'll give it a B plus. I think it's a pretty good fit uh, for the Cardinals program. Let me know what you guys think. Now, don't miss out. Jeff Brom replacements at Purdue. That video's coming soon. If you're watching live, we'll break it down. If you're watching this, uh, just video on demand. Uh, stay tuned for that as well. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications because our college football coverage is only increasing throughout the month of December. Transfer portal, recruiting, uh, coaching hot boards, we've got it all here. So hit that sub button here at College Football Now on Chat Sports. All right, uh, bowl game opt-out. Some notable ones coming through as you're seeing more and more of this big prospect starting to prepare for the NFL draft. Michael Mayer, the tight end out of Notre Dame, projected to be a first-round pick. He will not play in the Fighting Irish's bowl game. Neither will a trio of Florida players. Gervin Dexter, Osiris Torrance, and Anthony Richardson, the quarterback out of uh, Florida, of course. And then Kentucky quarterback Will Levis making that decision. We heard that he had opted for the NFL draft. Now he will opt out of Kentucky's bowl game. So some notable players there that will not compete with their college football teams for the final time. There's a lot of debate on what the right decision here is. I think the rule of thumb, if you're not in the college football playoff and you have a chance uh, to be a high first round, you know, a high pick and you don't want to risk your future uh, by uh, suffering an injury in a, I don't want to say meaningless bowl game, but a lesser tier bowl game, I, I can't really argue with someone making that decision. Now pick a quarterback to draft because there's going to be a lot of debate uh, at the top spot between C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, but also Will Levis, Anthony Richardson. I think right now Levis has the clear edge, but could Richardson get in? In that position. He's got some raw tools that will intrigue some teams. Type WL for Will Levis. Type AR for Anthony Richardson. Let me know who you would rather draft. More bowl game opt-outs. Eric Gray, the Oklahoma running back. Penn State corner, Joey Porter Jr. Ohio State wide receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Now, before you say, well, he's opting out of a college football playoff semifinal, he came out and Ohio State came out and basically said he wasn't going to be healthy in time, so he's going to continue to rehab and then prepare for the draft and try to be ready for the combine in February. So can't really blame him there. Kalijah Cansey, the defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh, and then Arkansas linebacker Drew Sanders opting out as well, a potential first-round pick. Let's get to some transfer portal tracker now. Uh, updates, I should say. Some notable commitments. Phil Jerkovic, the uh, Boston College quarterback who was really pretty good a couple of year, uh, a few years ago, has been banged up a little bit. He's going to Pittsburgh now as Keaton Slovis has entered the portal. And you look at his career, coming off that 2020 season, he was starting to get some NFL draft buzz. But then in 2021, was banged up, didn't play that well. This year, played a little bit better, but still 
still not as good as he was in 2020. So he gets a fresh start. BC has kind of fallen off in the last uh, couple of seasons as well. So Jerkovich heading over to Pittsburgh. Justin Wright, the linebacker, he's going from Tulsa to Oklahoma State. So he'll make that power five jump as uh, that's really an advantage of the portal, uh, right? You, especially when kids who are under-recruited, they perform at small schools. They're like, hey, I want to make a jump in competition, maybe have a chance to play in the NFL. That's what Justin Wright is doing here. He goes from Tulsa to Oklahoma State to play for Mike Gundy and much needed because the Oklahoma State Cowboys have had a lot of players enter the portal. Ladarius Henderson, offensive lineman, uh, three-year starter, one of the more notable ones here. He has transferred from Arizona State to Michigan uh, to give the Wolverines a punch on that offensive line. They're expected to lose a couple of guys to the NFL, so a guy who could plug and play as a starter for the 2023 NFL season. More to break down here in just a little bit, but I want to tell you guys a little bit more about our sponsor today, and that is Rocket Money. You want to save some money? Rocket Money is going to help you do that by canceling subscriptions that you no longer need. Did you know that 80% of people have subscriptions that they have forgotten about? Maybe for you, it's an unused Amazon Prime account or a Hulu account that never gets streamed. There's this great app that I use that helps me keep track of all of my expenses, and because of it, I no longer waste money on subscriptions I don't even use. You might have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as True Bill. You can download it today, rocketmoney.com slash NFL Daily. This app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you what you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were still paying for. You might even find out you've been double charged. So stay on top of your, your upcoming bills. Cancel whatever subscriptions you don't want anymore. And you don't have to go through the hassle of contacting Netflix who are like, hey, I don't want you anymore. Then they give you a sales pitch of why you need to stay on, yada, yada, yada. You click cancel on this app next to a specific subscription. Rocket Money handles it. You don't have to do anything more. Download the app today, rocketmoney.com slash NFL Daily. I've been using this for a couple of weeks. I was able to cancel my Xbox Live a subscription that I haven't used in two years. Cost me 150 bucks, but no longer uh, because... Uh, uh, they canceled it for me. And when I say it cost me that, not the uh, rocket money didn't charge me. I've been wasting money because I forgot that I had that subscription. Don't forget anymore. Rocketmoney.com slash NFL Daily. They will cancel any unnecessary subscriptions for you. All right, let's keep going with our portal tracker. Some commitments here. Josh Brown, the uh, Florida offensive lineman, staying in the SEC. He will play for Arkansas, you've also got uh, Levante Devani, uh, the linebacker. He goes from Stanford to Utah. Uh, Fiddy Olodeheo, or Ola Dejo, excuse me, goes from Cal to UCLA. And then Jake Heimlicker goes from uh, Penn to UCLA. So making the jump uh, to the FBS there. Remember Jake Smith? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. He played for Texas back in 2019 and was pretty good. Ended up transferring to USC. Did not play at all this year. And now he's back in the transfer portal with, I believe, two years of eligibility remaining. So a talented wide receiver. We'll see where he lands as uh, he's one of the more notable names to put his name in the transfer portal. Six foot, 200 pounds uh, out of Scottsdale, maybe Arizona, Arizona State, if he wants to return home uh, to the state of Arizona. So we will have to wait and see where he ends up going. And we will We'll continue to update you guys on everything that's happening in that portal. Speaking of which, do you like the college football transfer portal? Type Y for yes, type in for no. Are you a fan of it? Uh, curious to see what you guys feel on this one. Now let's jump to coaching carousel discussion. Jim Leonard is leaving, no question at all. He has announced that he will leave Wisconsin after its bowl game uh, as there was some chatter that, oh, he could stay on and be the defensive coordinator for new head coach Luke Fickle, but he is opting to leave, and he uh, released a statement on his Twitter page saying, it has meant the world to me to be able to pour my heart and soul into the Wisconsin football program over the past seven years. After discussions with my family and Coach Fickle, I will remain the defensive coordinator through the bowl game, but no longer be a part of the staff after the conclusion of the 2022 season. It has been an honor to coach these young men and thank you to all the fans who have supported us along the way on Wisconsin. So let me just say this first. Everyone is going to want to hire Jim Leonard as their defensive coordinator. That includes the NFL. He's done some NFL interviews the past couple of years. I think that's the most likely path for him uh, to jump to the NFL as a DC, but he could get a head coaching job at the college level or a major college football defensive coordinator gig as well. Here are some potential fits for Jim Leonard. Purdue job just opened up. 
Big Ten. Uh, I know they just had an offensive-minded head coach in Jeff Brom, but if you want a coach who is very respected in his per, per, uh, profession, then uh, I think uh, Jim Leonard could be a potential fit there. He knows the area for recruiting. Cleveland Browns, defensive coordinator. Regionally, it makes sense. NFL's been interested for a while. I think that could happen. Green Bay Packers, defensive coordinator. That could be an option. USC, if USC wants to move on from Alex Grinch and uh, upgrade at DC, that could be a possibility. And really just any defensive coordinator job in college football and some others in the NFL. I think Jim Leonard's going to be just fine. Uh, he will certainly have some options. Now, what do you guys think? Where will Jim Leonard go? Do you think it'll be the NFL, or do you think he'll stay in college football, NFL, CFB? Let me know what his next stop ends up being. All right, uh, kind of a interesting story here. So the Virginia Cal Cavaliers, who went 3-7 and seven this year, canceled their final two games because of that tragic story where uh, three of their football players were uh, shot and killed. Just a horrible situation. They opted out to not finish the season. Well, the NCAA has granted Virginia seniors or players with one year of eligibility remaining or the final year of their eligibility being this year, those players will get an extra year of eligibility. Now, I do want to make clear if they weren't a senior, like if it was a true freshman or something like that, it's not like they're a freshman again next year unless they redshirted. This is just for seniors uh, who didn't get to go through senior day, for example. They're going to get an extra year. And look, quite frankly, I think this is a good move by the NCAA because uh, the way this season ended for that group, so tragic. Uh, they lose uh, teammates, friends for life. Um, they didn't get to go through senior day, uh, so they're going to get an extra year. I think that's the right move by the NCAA. We don't uh, applaud the NCAA that often, uh, so when they do make a good decision like this, I think uh, they should be applauded for it. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Again, we'll continue to have updates within the transfer portal. Recruiting is heating up as well. National Signing Day just a couple days away, so uh, stay tuned for that. We'll update you guys on all of that and more, so subscribe to the channel and don't miss any of it.